Hello, good evening, and welcome back. Breaking news. The election for the 12th of December is going ahead. Eyes to the right, 438. Nose to the left, 20. So, even though he only needed a simple majority of half, he has finally actually got two-thirds support. Well done, Mr. Johnson. He's scheduled off to the 1922 committee, um, basically in order to, to launch the firing gun to say, yes, yes, here we go, now we're in it, let's start campaigning. So, uh, why was the kerfuffle between the 12th and the 9th? Well, of course, Labour was saying we actually want it the 9th, because by the 12th the university students will be home. The problem with that is, of course, for Labour, is that their voters will not be able to vote twice. <clears throat> and that's what they're hoping for, same in 2017, that their supporters of university students, who just go to university to get indoctrinated these days, uh, they can not vote twice um, anymore, because all they would do is they would vote once um, at their place of study, and then vote a second time uh, where their family is. Uh, in order to double their vote. Not that they're allowed to do this, of course, but uh, when did the law stop the communists before? So, good news, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful good news. So, <laughs> action plan. Leave.eu is creating an app in order to decide, okay, so where do you live? Is it better for you to vote for the Brexit party or for the Conservatives? Because, of course, if there is a Labour stronghold and they hate the Tories, that ain't going to work. So in order to not split the vote, we've got some tactical voting coming in. In which case, in those areas, most likely in Manchester, we'd be voting for the Brexit Party instead. Even though Boris Johnson hasn't agreed with an official plan, people are dealing with it themselves. Because, believe it or not, individuals deal with <laughs> pretty much everything better than the government does. And this is yet another example of that. That it seems then... Even the people are better at organising the government than the government. But um, let, let me get off my minicky high horse for a bit then. So they say that the, the last um, sitting of Parliament will be the 5th of November, which is, of course, very, very fitting. And I think it would be nice to watch some V for Vendetta in the, the week before that then. And they will come back. On Friday the 13th, which is beautiful. <laughs> then they'll be sworn in, that'll take a few days, so they probably won't actually be seated until um, the new year, because they'll be taking their Christmas holiday, because that's what politicians like most, especially this parliament, they like taking days off, because, hey, it's, it's tiring when you're going against the will of the people, and you need your time off to just delay it even more. And that's, uh, that's what we find here. So... We can, of course, ex expect the BBC to go into even further overdrive to explain how the Conservatives and the Brexit Party are so, so terrible and how it's, it's clearly just racism and fascism fueling the desire to decide your own destiny. Mm, yes. But what, what do they say um, when they were talking about it? And why would they... Uh, what changes have they made other than the date? There were... Um, efforts to lower the voting age to 16 and 17 and allow EU nationals to take part. Yes, they thought, hey, so similar to what Tony Blair did in order to get more Labour voters, which was just mass immigration, import the third world, promise benefits, and you can see a similar thing with Sadiq Khan. Oh, um, so in London, in the boroughs where they have a, uh, a, a, a white minority, and it's the non, or a white British minority rather, and where the black and Asian minority ethnic, or whatever you might wish to say, Middle Eastern, basically, um, where there were uh, higher concentrations of them, then that is where Sadiq Khan gets the most votes. So it's voting based on demographics and ethnicity instead of policies. So the same is done here to say, well, who can we indoctrinate the best? Well, obviously the, the young people. And who can we try to appeal to their selfish instincts? Um, EU nationals, well... Well, yes, of course. Um, the funny thing is, of course, that if you're a hard-working EU national um, and decided to move to the UK, you will also be uh, wishing for Brexit because you'll be wanting to make the country the best it can be because you want the best life for yourself and you don't want an easy road, you want a successful road. And that's uh, the path less trodden. Make your own path instead of following in the footsteps of giants. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, they uh, thankfully failed for this. 
So, it's a 10 toy pieces of pad with stores. The um, plan being trying to get the, the Webble MPs back, but now that the Brexit Party will of course be campaigning, we're hoping to get some sort of coalition. Uh, Labour, we don't care because he's come out as a Marxist. Um, Swanson, we don't care. She, she doesn't care about the will of the people at all. She might use that as a guise sometimes. Uh, but hey, just, just be honest because at this point, people can see through your bullshit lies anyway. But hey, here we have it. Um, good news for one and all. And hey, maybe this is the oomph I need in order to finally rid myself of this illness. So thank you all very much for watching and spread the good news in, <laughs> into your workplaces. I, I'm sure they'll love you talking about politics and Brexit. Um, <laughs> and I'll get out my St. George flag again. So until next time, have a wonderful week. And, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll see you at the, the voting stations.